Before we embark on this crafting adventure, here's a sneak peek. We have to delve into the first essential step, research. In this case, that means watching every Ghibli movie that I own. The Wind Rises, Howl's Moving Castle, and Spirited Away. They know. Bob Ross would be proud. The most amazing setting for a movie, Miyazaki. You've done it again. Me every day of my life. This boat gets me every time. Everything about this movie gets me every time. Five minutes in, and I'm already emotional. I see this scene in my dreams. She's just running through the flowers. It gets me. The obligatory Ghibli rain needs to happen every movie. I love when it happens. Well, this movie just has everything. It's got the characters. It's got the beautiful environments. It's got the satisfying before and after of cleaning. How I feel every single day of my life. Maybe I just need a really good soak. Me doing every project. One day, this is gonna be me. Like living out in the middle of nowhere, doing crafts, and making magical hair ties for strangers. I don't understand why I cry every single time it ends. I've seen it like 400 times. I know what happens at the end. Does anybody else just want to be how? <laughs> Yet another satisfying cleaning montage. I love how their hair moves. I love the castle. I just love everything so much, apparently. That one character from IQ looks like him in his half bird state. The rain scene. His room. And this is gonna be a bold statement here. This is probably the most beautiful space in any Ghibli movie. I said it. Everything in the animation moves so reactively to each other. I love how when he does magic, he puts his arm out like he's directing traffic. If only we could all just be howl summoning like beautiful meadows. One of the really beautiful things about Ghibli movies is, of course, the settings. I'm sure you have seen many, many people do paintings. Today, we're adding another person to that. I probably should tape around these. So beautiful. I don't paint landscapes very often. In fact, I would almost say that I basically never paint landscapes. So this is an interesting choice. You don't have to be good at anything to do it. And I am just trying to be an example of that, I guess. I would normally try to be helpful. I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. Somebody help me. The Wind Rises particularly is interesting to me because it's a lot more grounded in reality. There really isn't anything magic. I think it's really cool to make a movie about somebody that's just really passionate about something. I think passionate people make the coolest characters. Everybody makes mistakes, right, Bob? We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Thanks, Bob. No matter what you paint and how it turns out, Bob's gonna be proud of you. And really, what matters more than that? Ghibli movies have a really interesting use of sound design. Love the use of silences contrasted with really loud sounds. But the earthquake is a really good example of that. I'm gonna be maybe a little bit cliche here, but Spirited Away is my favorite Ghibli movie for a lot of reasons, most of which do not matter. I remember that I saw quite a few times when I was young because they used to play it on Cartoon Network. Spirited Away really kind of centers around the idea of how easily things are polluted, not just the environment, which they show through the different spirits and the way that they get polluted and corrupted very easily, but also the way that people are polluted very easily as well. I think that really shows in no faces character he is very easily corrupted by greed and vices i guess that are within all the people and spirits that he interacts with and then he's saved by the one person that doesn't have these things if i can say one thing about making a film you have to have good characters if people don't connect with the characters they're just not going to care about your movie and that is the cold hard truth <laughs> you could have a movie that's like not even that great still have good characters and people 
will probably still like it. It's important elements in a story, the characters and the setting. The Spirited Away has those two things completely down. I was gonna do a different still, changed it to this. One page of daytime, one page of nighttime, landscapes on the top, person on the bottom. Nicer as a whole. Made my life a lot more complicated, but well, I decided to do an interior instead. Howl, he's just laying on the chair very fancily. For some reason, I feel like I'm not that good at interiors, any kind of architecture. Not that I'm that great at landscapes either, but. Also something that's very unique about Ghibli movies, the environment and the spaces become their own character. Human-like characteristics, sort of, in that they react to things that are happening. Obviously, the soundtracks, top-notch. Joe Hisaishi is doing it. I feel like my soul just heals a little bit every time I watch a Ghibli movie. If I can ever make some sort of art that ever makes somebody else feel the same way that Studio Ghibli movies make me feel, I feel like I would have succeeded in life. We're going even deeper. I decided that I wanted to do a miniature. I had quite a few different ideas. One that has been in my head for years. A little garden on the side of the bathhouse. Another tin of butter cookies. Should I start with the hardest part? Yes, but is that what we're gonna do? No, but there are no rules to craft. If you want to eat your dessert before your dinner, do it. Put down a layer of color. We're gonna try to cover as many sins with paint as possible as oh. Well, my paintbrush is falling apart, so I'm sure that bodes well. One of these days, I'm just gonna actually make a better sketch and not say that I have to fix everything with the paint, but today is not that day. A painting of Haku in his dragon form going all the way around the outside of the tin. Added some clouds. I painted a basic version of him. I'll go back to it later. I used the size of the tin to decide the scale of 500 different marks now, and none of them are the correct measurements. It was a little bit tricky to size this just because it's a circle. I did build up the two areas of trim to give that area a little bit more height. I started building some of the screen door frames. I cut out another piece of paperboard for each screen door. There ended up being four full ones and then two half ones on each side. I started building up the frames. I just cut strips of paperboard, cut them to the sizes and built the frame around the door and just glued it on. And I did this so that I would have three layers at the end. The blade is so dull. It doesn't do anything. I was finally able to change the blade for my exacto knife which i have not changed probably in over six or seven years feels like i'm wielding excalibur or something cut out all of the windows i didn't want it to be really flimsy so i needed to have as many layers as possible i the edges down i painted the frames to look like wood wood is very natural paint it a lot more opaque in some areas there's supposed to be five panels <laughs> there's one reference image that has four all the other reference images have five but at this point i just don't care. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. It's fine. I'm just gonna keep going. The top windows, I did two panels to line up with the lower doors. I put a lot of pressure on myself to be super accurate. I almost psych myself out and then I overthink it. Here's an example. Look at this and be like, yep, that's fine. However, this one has a really thin frame and these are too thick. That really bothers me. And that's crazy. And it's not that serious. At least I'm aware that that's crazy. Do your best, but don't freak yourself out. I also needed to go in and file the edge started making the bottom panel with all of the slats. Me just like sitting here trying to calculate the size of everything. Even though the calculations that I'm doing are basically arbitrary. <gasps> There's a bunny outside. And now I'm just sitting here thinking about how much I love bunnies. <laughs> I cut out the trim around it first in paperboard, two layers of it. What a beautiful piece from the back. Lay everything down with whatever you got laying around. I had to paint underneath it first. There are two beams underneath the surface of the slats, so I put those down first. I may as well just paint this part too. Cut a bunch of pieces to be the wooden slats that go across. Layered all of those on and next to each other. Taped on the doors so that I can cut the areas underneath it that I need the light to shine through. So I'm gonna put the panes on. The doors have clear glass on them. So I wanted to stay at least kind of true to the movie. So I attached plastic. I decided to cover them with a paper texture, like an actual shoji screen. I'm gonna glue these on and then essentially do the same thing with the side pieces and the windows at the top. 
was very paranoid that it would not fit in right. I just cut it anyway. I wanted the two center doors to be able to open and close. It's just like making my life hard, I guess. I started building the back pieces. I realized I needed to cut out the center for the doors. It's a little bit different than the side ones because I'm cutting out the entire area. Then I started building the rail system for the doors to slide on. A strip on the top and the bottom that the door can slot into and just move. Well, and I had to make the middle doors slightly taller than the other two so that they would fit into the rail system. I covered the bottom trim and a bunch of pieces on the facade with paperboard. Went in and painted the bottom slats that I had done before. Varied shades of brown. Added a dark cast below where the nails are. Watered down some brown and then wiped it off. Hot glue dots to make the nails three-dimensional. Oh. Okay, it didn't go that well. Well, it kind of went as planned because I thought it was gonna be bad. There's no going back. Cut out the back of the tin where the light was gonna come in, which uh, I don't really work with metal. I don't really have a lot of tools or knowledge. I figured I could just do it as ugly as possible and it wouldn't matter as long as it was cut. Help me. The first side was definitely the hardest to cut. I was cutting a straight line in the middle of a full metal piece. Beautiful craftsmanship. Bent down all of the edges, hammered them back into the side, sanded it down as best as I could. Cover the edges with Mod Podge afterwards, painted the inside of the tin. Just wanted to get a layer down of paint so that things would adhere better. I added a trim above the top windows. After that, I did glue the entire wall into the tin so that I could start sizing some of the other things. The right shape of the roof to fit into the tin. Cut the piece out of cardboard. And covered the flat side of that. You can't really see the roof very well. I looked at some of the other roofs, a bunch of wood pieces in it. I started gluing toothpicks somewhat equally spaced. Where my marks become completely useless because I've already changed my mind. Cut them to the size and had a little bit of the end hanging off. Painted all the ends. The hardest part about miniatures for me is trying to figure out what sequence of events I should make things in. I'm definitely prone to overthinking everything. Used cardstock because it's pretty flexible. I cut strips of that, attached them on top, layering them, pressing really close into the toothpick so that you could still see the relief trimmed all the excess off painted it it's sort of a grayish blue color went in and started adding highlights and shadows to just define basically and make it more 3d pretty sure this isn't the case on the actual thing but i did add darker brown sort of weathering i just like that painted that top part blue it glued the roof on started painting a night sky apparently that is just something that i like putting on too many of my projects it would be so cool to have like fiber optic lights for the stars paint some leafy things i don't really know i just feel the desire to do that i think i gotta have my own obligatory ghibli rain sequence I needed to do with the dirt was I sifted it. My paint cup does kind of look like Howl's bathroom. Cut up a bunch of the dead leaves to add to the ground texture. Two different areas of ground. I think the white area is probably like rocks or something. It could be some kind of sand. Mixed some paint, added some dirt, some of the small pieces of the dead leaves. Painted that on. There was probably a way better way to make the cherry blossom tree. It wouldn't have taken me like three days. This part looks kind of similar to the curve. Form a shape of a tree. See how this is gonna fit in. Cutting and trimming the pieces and gluing them together. Trying to make organic items. You want to make it look like you didn't think about it. I decided to cut out a bunch of petal kind of shapes from pink construction paper. It took me so long to cut petals and I glued each one on. Building up areas that I wanted to be a little bit more volume. Went in and painted the cherry blossoms where they met the tree so that there would be a little bit more variation. And the ones that 
that are painted and then unpainted. Started making the bushes unravel. Mixed some green in with some water. Dropped the cotton ball in there until it picked up the color and then took it out to dry. It kind of looks like a cabbage. No! Cabbages. Took a bunch of moss, cut it up, and then I just dabbed glue onto the cotton ball covered in the moss. Kind of looks like some weird undersea creature. To make the blue flowers, I was going to use cotton balls, saturate them in glue, and then dip them in petals that I had cut from blue construction paper. Kind of a mess. Decided to try and make the pink flowers instead. The same method that I had used to make popcorn, dyed water, put some tissue paper into that, took it while it was wet, rolled them up sort of like roses. You can make indentations with your fingernails, which ended up being really good for the blue flowers. Oh, like 10 times better. <laughs> Let's be real. I glued all the pink flowers onto the bush. A tiny no face. A really small basic armature. How beautiful. I covered it in clay, smoothed it as best as I could for something so simple. You would think it would look better than this. The tiny little mass. One of my greatest works of sculpting yet. The sad part is that that is probably actually true. He was still a little lumpy at the end, but uh, aren't we all? Put him in the toaster oven, cooked him up, and he was ready to go. Painted him black and then the mask as best as I could. If you ever want to make anything out of clay and you suck at clay, I I recommend no face. <laughs> Flowers are too big. Look at this and then look at his face. I never said I was good with scale. Take them all off and cut them and put them all back on. I do have a couple of these left from Serendipity Project. So I think I'm gonna repurpose them. You can kind of see the difference. Maybe it looks worse, I don't know. Attached the blue flowers onto that. Painted some darker blues onto the flowers. I attached those onto the bush. I love making little props. Shahiro's bucket of water that she's dumping out. They just a circle with a really long rectangle. Glued the rectangle around the circle. Used cardstock to layer on wood pieces. Painted it brown to make it look like wood. There's two little strip things. Water in the bucket. I used hot glue. Before I put everything in, I went ahead to finish up the haku drawing that I had done. Like the tin. It's a full circle. <laughs> the assembly. is a little piece of the Ghibli magic. a really fun one because I haven't really done as many landscapey sort of ones. Natural elements are pretty tricky. <laughs> pretty small project but still took me a super long time. I think the outside painting of Haku leaves something to be desired but uh, if anybody does this of course as always please send it to me. Tell me your favorite Studio Ghibli movie, favorite Ghibli rain scene, character, setting, whatever. That's it. I say that as if this video wasn't probably like 20 minutes long already. Freaking Mona Lisa 
videos. How much more often would I post if I didn't do like three different projects in every video? I hope you enjoyed.